everyone, Part here today, and welcome to part 9 of the Tamiya 112 Honda RC211 V bike build. Before we get going, as always, hit the subscribe button, click the little notification bell so you get notified of our latest videos, give us a thumbs up, and should you wish to leave a comment down below, I'll reply to them all, even if it's just a hello. As I always say, in the description of the video is a link to a big long list of all the products I use in the video, so if you see me using something today, I think, wonder where Paul gets that from, click the link, it takes you to the forum, big long list, it's in there with links to where you can buy it from. If you can't get it in your country, search for the product and you should be able to find it that way. If you get stuck, drop me a message and I'll always try and help you out. There we are. So, we're back. Um, today, we are going to focus on the rear swing arm, which includes the chain, rear suspension, brakes, caliper, uh, the rear wheel, tyre, getting all these components sprayed, assembled, washed, ready for um, putting it onto the frame of the bike. We've also backtracked a touch. Uh, one of you guys out there, Peter, left a comment saying, with all the detail you've gone to, it's a shame it's not put hose clamps on. Now, I did look for hose clamps before I started this build. Couldn't find any anywhere. It says everywhere for top studio ones, which are like the only ones I really knew of, to be honest. And these don't have Jubilee clips. These have a twin wire type um, clip. From what I can gather from the hoses, it looks like a rubber silicon hose. It's not really rubber, it's probably silicon. And it looks like they're wrapped in a self-amalgamating tape. And then these two wire clips hold them on. So it's not a traditional Jubilee clip. It's a double. And I couldn't find them anywhere at all. Peter left a comment and he was right. You know, it wasn't a critique. It was a question. And he got me thinking. And he did make a good point of, you know, whilst I could do this, how far do I go with the detail? It has to stop somewhere. But I was looking at and I thought, you know what, the more I think about it, the more Peter's right. And it does need those hose clips. So I went on a mammoth search all over the YouTube, uh, YouTube, the internet, looking and found some uh, uh, spot model made by Renaissance. Uh, ordered them. Uh, I got three sets and a set of decals from Ivia. Uh, and they arrived super, super fast. So I took that hose off that we put on last time. Um... And in the first part of the video, we're going to put the hose clamps on. So we've got plenty left for all the other parts. Um, that is the last bit of detail we're going to do, because the next step is wiring it up. And it's a nightmare doing that. My ZXRR was fully wired with all the sensors, connectors, wires, the lot. Took a lot of work to do, and it's all hidden behind the fairings. You can't see it. It's a real shame. Um, so I've done it once. I know I can do it. And the interest to do it again isn't really there. But with these removable fairings... I'm thinking, where does this detail stop now? How far do I go? <laughs> so, I'm going to have a little think about this. I'm going to have a look at the wiring and what have you. I've been mulling it over the past couple of days. We'll see. But for now, we've added the, the hose clamps, and I'm glad I did. So, thank you, Peter, for the kick up the backside. Uh, I did look for them. Honestly, I did look for them in the beginning, but just couldn't find them anywhere. But I was sent to for uh, Studio 27 Top Studio, and I uh, can't find those anywhere at all. But Renaissance make them, so you can get them off their website more than likely. I got the last set from Spot Model, um, but they're nice clips as well. They look really, really good in place. So, yeah, I'm going to have a look at the super detail and have a little think. I'm going to have a little think and see how far I want to take this. But for now, we are where we're at. Engine will be in the frame today, and it's going to look amazing. It really is going to look cool. Um, and that's it. So let's crack on. Let's get started. Let's see where we end up. Right, so first off, we are going to add these wire clips to the hoses. We added last time on the engine, and we've got a couple more to add on other components later on in the build. As you can see, they are pretty prominent and very visible, so we're going to add them. So I've taken the part off the bike, just leave it off very gently. Uh, it's only held on with CA glue, so it does break quite easy. Uh, we've got some Renaissance uh, hose clamps. As you can see, you can get your part numbers off the front. Basically, we've got 3mm and 2mm. For this, we're going to use the 3 mils. As you can see, they're a double wire type. Now, there is plenty of other... There's three components to this. There's the wire clamp, um, the turn screw, and the actual component for it. We are just going to put the wire clamp on because from my reference pictures, that's pretty much all you can see uh, visible. We've got our Zoron PE cutters. And we're going to gently remove this from the sprue, fret rather. Got our diamond Tamiya file to give them a clean up. 
As you can see, we've got a nice new cutting mat for the background. This is one of the Tamiya ones. Absolutely beautiful colour. I love it. We've got a UMP buffer. And we're going to use this as our sponge for rolling this into a curve. So I've got a trumpet to chisel. So we get the main shape with that. We're then going to get a micro brush, which is a little bit thinner. I'm just going to roll it again. And this rolling action gently curves it into a curved shape. You can buy specialist machines. I actually own one, but I prefer to use our sanders because it's quicker and I think it does a better job. So we get the main curve shape in. Then from the back of the hose, we're going to add a bit of CA glue, just a little dab of the thick Loctite CA glue. We're going to grab our clip. We're going to place it at the back so this won't be seen at all from behind. We're going to pop it in place where we want it, maneuver it, ignore my optivizer showing through. So pop it in place where we need one side, let that sit for a minute, then we'll hit it with some kicker get it dried and then we'll come back and attach the other side so the cutting mat yeah i got a brand new tamiya cut mat love the color it looks great on camera and then we've got our sacrificial smaller tamiya mat on top it's a good tip to do have sacrificial mats on top of your main mat for any ca glue or paint that you may spill uh, you ruin a cheaper mat rather than a more expensive one so there we go we've used some kicker in place on that that should hold that now Using our thumb in the background to hold it on a little bit more. We're going to gently curve the rest of the, the... Looking for the point we need to glue it. Once we've spotted that, release the hose clamp a little bit. A little dab of CA glue. Pop it underneath. Once you're happy you've got enough glue, push it in place. Give it a few seconds to hold it and dry. And then once we're happy, we'll hit it with some more... Accelerator again, super glue kicker. Beauty of the thicker CA glue is it takes a little bit longer to dry, so you get a bit more time to manoeuvre and manipulate parts in place. If you need a little bit more, we'll come in, add a dab more, like so. And then we'll grab our micro brush into our kicker and give it a little dab. Make sure it's pushed fully home. Once you're happy, let it go. And there we go. Now, if you do get any kick it elsewhere, don't rub it off. Let it dry and evaporate all by itself. Otherwise, it will more than likely take paint with it. I'm just making sure we're where we want the hose clamp to sit. Looks absolutely spot on. And it looks really good. Yep. Well worth adding. So, we've done all four now. Done them off camera. You've seen one. They're all the same. We've got a lot of stuff to get through today, so... Making sure we uh, definitely try and get everything in this 30 minute video that we can. So all four are done. We're going to put the hose back on where we took it off the other day. So a little dab of CA again, excuse the optivizer. I feel like the super glue been using for some time now. I do have some New super glues on the way. Um, UMP started to stock deluxe materials. I've used their CA glue before and I do highly rate it. So we'll be getting some more of those to test. I've got to remember to fold in that jeweler's loop on the end of my optimizer because it gets right in the way of the camera. So popped it in place, a little bit of excess CA glue removed with a cocktail stick. And that looks much, much better. Well worth adding that detail. Yeah, well worth adding. They look great. Very, very happy with that. Absolutely superb. So, with the kits, you get these little screwdrivers all the time. Little standard Tamiya Phillips head screwdriver. You also get an extension with some of the kits to make a bigger screwdriver. In other kits, you get the full length one. And then I've got the pro one. Me being me, you know me, I'm a bit of a Tamiya tool tart. This is a very, very nice tool. So there's a multitude of screwdrivers. They all do the same job, but I like the feel of this Pro one. It's a very, very nice tool. So we've already offered this up. We know it fits. It's been in before. But just take your time putting it in. Make sure you're not catching anything or pulling any parts off or damaging decals or anything like that. Just look at the locating points. Make sure it fits in. Give it a little bit of a helping hand. There we go. There's back in. Front in. Perfect. 
we've got our screws to one side go by instructions look at the reference and you can see the size is required like i say i'm a big advocate of spending money on tools uh, you can buy all the kits in the world without tools and paints and what have you you can't build them to the full extent or full potential in my opinion so a bit of money invested in tools as well as kits along the way is well spent and uh, you really can't go wrong with Tamiya. I think probably 90% of my day-to-day -day modeling tools are Tamiya. Um, everything they make is superb. I'd highly recommend them. We also sell a lot of UMPRetail.com simply for that reason that I use them. And we know the quality. They're not necessarily the cheapest, but very, very high quality tools. And this little screwdriver is great. As you can see, it is magnetized, which has its benefits. You can hold the screws on. And there we go there's all four screws located in place and there's our engine secured in the frame it looks great very happy with that we still need to put a wash on the actual frame itself but we'll do that after the front fork sets on i don't want to be manhandling all the frame with a wash on it but it looks great very happy with all this the carbon looks great engine detail looks really good very happy We've got some nice tonal difference and the wash brings out the depth in all the colors so we've got our rear swing arm which we've already assembled and the hugger which is all painted decaled and we're ready um, we're now going to build up our rear suspension unit it has a nut inside which i've left out before hence the big arrow points at me saying don't miss this you big dummy we've got a spring we've got a locating uh, sleeve and the top mount piece as well all held together with this 20 mil screw and there's a little cover cap at the top we've got a chain to do to pop in as well there's a couple of components to hold the suspension to the frame and we've got our rear caliper to build up as well and that's all together and that's where we're going to be at the end of this video so the little nut pops into the center there's a little tiny locating point for it make sure you double check it make sure you get it in the right place i've left this out before like a complete idiot and i kind of had to bodge together the build at the end um but one of those things hey we're not all perfect and mistakes do happen so make sure it's in the right place just double check your references make sure you orientate everything the right way pop your top piece on again making sure the nut stays in place and make sure it doesn't fall off or on the floor and we're just checking up how we line up we're going to glue this so we've got our tamia slash uh plastic weld concoction so we're a 50 50 mix of tamiya extra thin and emi plasti world links are in the description if you want to go have a look i'm just going to give it a light coat all around then we'll clamp it together and leave it to dry and that should be it really should need any filling nothing at all it'll just need a day or so to dry properly again i've got some new glue on the way to test from deluxe as well we've got some of their plastic magic stuff so not used that before interested to try that as well and there we go a couple of clamps make sure you've got all the important parts clamped together so our rear caliper just two parts to um, attach all these parts were cleaned up ages ago so everything is clean sanded up and polished put a couple of dabs of tamiya extra thin in there and we'll gently assemble our caliper or we'll drop it once then we'll assemble our caliper and there we go simple quick and easy so a little bit of our loctite perfect pen gel and we're going to mount all the parts on cocktail sticks for paint so a little dab on the locating point somewhere you won't see it won't interfere with um, locating it in place when it needs putting on the bike so we'll do both of those little dab hold it for a couple of seconds job done same with all the other parts anywhere that isn't a prominent place little dab of ca glue and they're all ready for paint nice and simple to paint the chain itself has got a hole through the sprocket at the back so we've popped our um cocktail stick through that as is the top mount of the suspension as well and that's it they're all our components ready for primer i'm going to prime off camera everything's getting primed in ump black all we need to do now is wait for our rear suspension component to dry which is about to 
There it is. And then we can sand it nice and flush and clean and get rid of those seams all the way around. So as you see, we've got some nice seams showing through there, um, exposed. So we're going to knock those back with a 240 UMP sander. Gently sand it. We don't need to be too hard. Let the sander do its work. It's an old cliche, I know. But let the tool do the work, not you. I'm just going to lightly sand until the seam's gone. A couple of awkward places to reach. So I've got some micro mesh out. We've got a UMP customizable sander. This is a 220. We're just cutting a piece off. Nice thin piece, and this will slot right where we need it. There we go. So there's a little gap at the top. I just couldn't quite get a sander in. So very, very handy, these customizable sanders. You can cut them to any shape. There is a review on the channel if you go back. And obviously, we sell them at umpretail.com as well. But they're getting the tightest areas. They come in all different grits and sizes. Perfect. So we've got Tamiya LP11, thin 50-50 as usual for the uh, Apex 2.2mm needle at 15 PSI. We've got our chain, brand new UMP black. And what we're going to do is we're going to spray all the upper surfaces as such, the top and bottom of the chain and the inner and upper in the LP11. I'll show why in a bit. So we've got four different components we need to paint. We need to paint the upper and lower parts in silver, the parts that face outwards in gold, and the sprockets uh, front and rear in... I'm going to do it in the dark iron colour, the same as did the centre of our brakes. So we're going to spray it in this colour first, let that sit and dry. And then we're going to use different methods to mask it. Same colour on the brake caliper uh, nipple. LP63 titanium silver. This is for those connecting arms between the suspension and the frame. I'm using the references in my uh, pit lane book uh, rather than the color call outs in the Tamiya instructions because they are often wrong, unfortunately. Everything's getting two to three light coats, leaving approximately five minutes between. Now we have Tamiya LP48 sparkling silver now. Um, I reckon just show this to be a pretty high shine metal finish. So again, a couple of coats left to dry. Now, I've been defeated. We've got a Tamiya TS spray that's been decanted and thinned. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a true gold in the LP range just yet. And the titanium gold just wasn't quite cutting it for me. So we've gone for um, LP, sorry, TS21, which is the lacquer can. So sadly, it's not all going to be painted in LPs. Probably going to be 98%. Um, I did spray it. Wasn't happy with the colour. It just wasn't gold enough for my liking. So it is what it is. It's one of those. So same 0.2 mil needle, 15 psi. Thinned with um, Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. And the same for the rear caliper as well. So if you notice on the uh, the rear chain, we'll chat about that in a second. A couple of coats, all done. So what we've done, because of the angle we sprayed, the top and bottom is still silver, as you can see. Or all the outer is gold as the real bike is in my references we've also got our caliper painted up very happy with that nice brembro caliper got the nipple to the caliper there as well an lp11 and our supporting arms there is on titanium silver like i say using the references from a book We've got nice opposing colours, tonal differences. It's going to make it a little bit more interesting and not look so monotonal. And of course, we've got the upper part of our suspension, again, in the titanium silver. So these are going to be left to dry, and then we'll come back and detail paint them in a minute. So again, references again, two different suspension components showed here. One's black and one's a gold. Now, I sprayed it in the titanium gold, wasn't happy with the colour, probably is more accurate, but I like a little bit more of a tonal difference, which is why I've sprayed it in gold. So it's a personal choice, and mine is to spray it in gold. So you can see it a bit easier from a distance. So we've got Azu tape. Absolutely love this tape, no idea how I managed before, and we're going to use this to mask up that rear suspension unit. So we're going to mask up the top half first, so a little slither of 2.5 mil. To mask this up, make sure you leave these paints um, to dry overnight, 12 hours at least, 
before masking. Once we've got the bottom part done, we'll hit it with a bit of 18mm Tamiya to make sure the top's all masked. Now we've got some 1.5mm Azu to fill in the little gap between the mount and the actual suspension component itself. And there we go. All done. Just go around, take your time, masking it up using your references. Job done. Now, we need to paint these sprockets. And the easiest way I've found of doing it is by using a circle template. Uh, one of these plastic ones you can pick up from art shops. Pick the closest size. I can't remember the exact size. I should have made a note. Offer it up so that it's equally covered all the way around. What we're trying to do is get paint onto the sprocket and miss the chain. Now, because it's cylindrical, it's not going to get the full uh, sprocket. So I'll show you how we do that in a second. So we've got the Tamiya LP54, uh, I think it is, dark iron. Now we're just putting a couple of light coats on. We're down low pressure, 15 PSI. And as you can see, almost perfect. This is how I always do it. And as you can see, we've missed the innermost part of the sprocket. So to get that, all we'll do is exactly the same, but we'll move the template down a touch. So we get the edge now. And that will ensure, there you go. As you can see, there's the bottom part, making sure the equal distances at the side. Give it another spray, and that will do the job perfect. Be careful of overspray, make sure you don't get any other parts covered. Probably worthwhile masking off, but me being me, I don't bother. And there we go, another quick coat of that. And that should have been near enough perfect. And there you go, spot on. Quick and easy, we'll do exactly the same to the small sprocket. And then leave that to one side to dry. So, like I say, my references show this to be either a anodized slash dark iron colour or a light titanium gold. I sprayed it in that colour. For me, it wasn't visually interesting enough. So, we've gone over it again with the TS21. It's not the correct colour, but it adds interest. And to me, it looks a lot more interesting than just being plain and boring. At the end of the day, it's your model. You spray it as you wish. As you can see, there's our front sprocket done now as well and how's that not bad eh? just using a circle template so this has been left overnight we've got all our components for our suspension we're going to assemble this together follow your instructions we've got the spring out the aftermarket uh, from Ford Seth and Tamiya if you're using the kit supply one it comes in black and apparently it needs to be grey so you will have to paint it if you're using the kit. Should you wish, that is. You can leave it black should you want. But the colour references for the bike show it to be grey. So there's a metal sleeve to insert in there. That just push fits in. I'm just making sure we're orientated the correct way, which we are. We've then got a spring to go over on top. Like so. Make sure it's seated properly. And then our top mount piece slots on as well and then you need to finagle this all together once you screw it on so grab your screwdriver don't worry about which way it's facing for now get a few turns on the screw first then you can orientate it the correct way which for us is facing backwards have a little looky see all looks good to me going to give it a little tight enough not going to go too tight there's no need these aren't moving parts or structural as such wipe off any fingerprints or dirt or what have you and there we go there's our rear suspension on our swing arm looking very nice and it'll uh, get a bit of depth later on when we add a wash which is now funnily enough so we've got a tamiya black panel line wash we're just going all around the swing arm adding a wash to any parts that are recessed or raised or prominent we're not putting tons of it in there we're just letting the capillary reaction carry it around we'll let it dry come back and remove any excess and this will add a bit of tonal depth and again a little bit more interest to the bike it's a simple step um but without critiquing i see so many people build bikes without a wash and it adds so much interest and, and turns a monotone kind of metal color into just a bit more interest and depth 
and on small parts like this it's more visible you can see it a lot more and it really does add a lot of interest to the model so it's worthwhile if you're not using washers um, it's something maybe worth thinking about using again just a capillary reaction any raised or recessed detail we're avoiding the brembro uh, recess lettering because we're going to pop some paint in there in a minute I think there are decals with the kit, but I'd rather use paint. It's a nice, simple thing to do anyway. But yeah, if you've not used washers, give it a go. They're well worth adding. It adds a lot of depth and detail, especially on things like this chain. So if you look at reference pictures of the chain. It's a gold color, and every link is prominently shown. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the wash everywhere all over it. Pretty thick. We're not being too stingy with the wash here. We'll let it dry and then come back later with cotton bud, odorless mineral spirits, and remove it, leaving the detail on the links themselves. And it's a big, big step to making this look a lot more interesting and a lot more realistic. So like I said, I'm not being stingy with the wash at all. We really are putting on quite thick. With this, we want it to dry, and then we can wipe it off where we want. The whole chain is covered. After a couple of hours of drying, we come back. We've got a bit of uh, Sansador from Windsor Newton on our cotton bud. What I like to do is wipe the excess away and then spin the cotton bud round and use the dry side to dry it off. Careful of any decals or anything you don't want to remove and just take off the excess. So this is our chain after all the excess has been removed. As you can see, we've got a nice bit of detail there now. It looks really good. So we've got Mr. Hobby Aqueous Red. And we're just going to put it on our brush, dab it into the recesses, leave it be, let it dry. Then we'll come back with a cotton bud later on and remove the excess paint. Now, did you use Tamiya for this or Vallejo? I've got rid of all my Tamiya acrylics now because I like the lacquer so much. So we're using the Hobby Aqueous. Okay, so one of our viewers, Kevin Stevens, sent me this a while back. It is a core RC tire seam removal tool. Basically a sharpened blade in a V. And it makes very short work of taking off the majority of the seam of the tire. Thank you, Kevin, for this. I've been using it on every bike build. And it works really, really well. Obviously, you're getting all the raised detail off. And then coming back with a sander to remove the excess. Um, but it works really, really well. It's basically, like I say, a sharpened V. You just line it up with the seam, gently push down and forward. And as you can see, it just takes off that raised part of the seam. Saves a bit of time and a nice little thing. So thank you, Kevin, for that. It's been very, very handy. Uh, we've got the 220, sorry, this is 220 um, sponge sander to get the excess off and then hitting it with the 240. I made, I made a mix-up before. I got the grey mixed up. Mix it with the, uh, the 240 sander to remove the excess. All the way around with the whole tyre. I like to give it a wipe over with some UMP airbrush clean at the end because the rubber dust gets everywhere. It is terrible. Um, it will need to clean further on in the build, but natural handling of the bike will remove any dust anyway. And there we go. It takes a little bit of time to do. It's not quite as quick as i just shown, but there we go. Happy with that. Gives the tyre a bit of a worn look as well no problem at all so putting the tire on the wheel even though it's been 2k and it's been left now for ooh, a good five days take your time putting anything over them because it's easy to actually damage it if you catch an edge or whatever so just take your time make sure the wheels are located in place and don't put too much stress on the center of the wheel because you risk damaging the spokes right some ca glue in place at the back we've got the rear hugger to put in place now be very very careful doing this Obviously, I've already offered it up to test fit it, and I know where it fits, but don't get any seagull on your fingers. Then touch the carbon because you'll just rip the decal straight off. So make sure you're happy where it fits, happy with the locating points. Put a couple of dabs of seagull on. Um, less is more you want, just enough to hold it, but you don't want really to need to squeeze out. And again, just be aware of where your fingers are going. Do not get seagull on them because it'll end up everywhere, ruining all your hard work. So that's a hugger in place. We've got a little bit of detail to add um, to the sprockets. So we're using our Molotow Chrome Pen. Just add a little bit of detail. It's already been washed and everything as well. And once you're happy, the chain is split. So it fits through the swing arm. So you slot it through as shown. Just be careful. Take your time. 
and then pop it in place into the locating hub at the side. There we go. Happy days. Now we've got the Top Studio uh, front and rear hex nuts and bolts. Again, getting harder and harder to find these now. Basically, this replaces the standard screw. What I like to do is open up the hole a touch. This is a 1.5 mil drill bit. Literally just removes a little bit of the excess plastic because I find the bolts a little bit too tight otherwise. Now, take your time putting the wheel in. Very easy to damage the wheel, the discs, the chain, start snapping things off. A little bit of finagling again. That's the word of the day today, finagle. Um, get it in, line up the locating points. Make sure you're happy it's all in place. And that's it. Leave it be. And then pop through the bolt. So this is a, well, it's a nut-headed bolt as such. And it even comes with a little photo etch spanner. Which is a nightmare because you get about halfway in and it'll get that tight. The spanner starts to bend because it's photo etch. So you're going to need a plan B. So another plan could be widen that hole a touch more. Say go to 1.6, 1.7 mil. That'll make the bolt a lot easier to go through. But if you want a bit of purchase on the bolt, make sure it's not going to come undone or go loose. Uh, for me, I grabbed my Gerber pliers and made sure that we were careful with them, keeping well away from any of the bodywork, making sure we had full purchase on that nut before we even attempted to move it. And as you can see, that made short work of it. You just want it enough so the, the wheel freely moves. Rear caliper, I've already test fitted this. We've got the bleed, no, the bleed nipple in. We've got the brake nipple in there too. It's a bit of a pig to get in there. But once you've got it in, a little bit of CA glue, pop it in place, and push it home. Make sure it's orientated correctly because there is a little bit of free play in there. Now we can offer the swing arm to the frame. Three things to look out for. There's two locating points for screws and you've got that front sprocket to ensure that goes in place as well. Once you're happy it's in place, pop the bigger of the two screws in. I think it's a 25 mil and a 10 mil. Screw that in place. That's the main locating screw for the swing arm. Then there's a lower one for the suspension components before. As you can see, there you go. Just popped it in place. We've added all the components to the swing arm now. So... Everything is in place. Everything's been given a wash. Everything's been wiped over. The only thing we need left to give a wash is the frame, the front frame of the bike. But I'll do that after we get the front four set in. I don't want to be manhandling the frame with the wash on it because it can leave fingerprints and leave marks. So we'll do that later on. Make sure these are tightened up, but not ridiculously tight. Like I said, there's no stress or strain. So there's no need to completely over tighten them. And there we go. All in place. That's looking good. Got some nice tonal differences there. The wash adds a lot. Looks really good. And I'm very, very happy with that. It looks absolutely spot on. One more piece to attach to the back. We've got a little bit of carbon on that chain guard at the back. We did that last time. A couple of dabs of RCA glue. Again, make sure not to get any CA glue on our fingers. Offer it up, look for the locating points, and just gently push it home. There we go. Jobs are good. And we need to pick out some detail on that later, but we'll get that in the next part. So there we go. That's where we're at today. Okay, there we go. That's where we're at today. Plenty of work done. Big, big step getting that swing arm in the frame, get the engine in the frame as well. Um, next time we come back, we will be focusing on probably the front forks, I think it will be. Uh, getting those assembled with the detail of Seth and Tamiya um, and getting those on the bike with the front wheel on as well. Very happy I had those hose clips. So, yeah, definitely happy I went back and did that. Um, and I'm going to have a look at the wiring and see how far we can take this. With those fairings being easier removed, you can save everything in a heartbeat. So it would be nice to add that detail. But as Peter said, um, how far do we take it? I don't know. I'm going to have a look and have a think today. We shall see. Well, there we go. That's part nine. We're back part ten very, very soon. Thanks for watching. As always, check out the National Scale Model Facebook page and forum, upretail.com. We got a lot of products I use in these videos. My Paul ISM Facebook page, the Off Air Hangout group, and the Live at the Bench group as well. If you're not sub, sub, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, 
and uh, hit the little bell for notifications and I'll catch you all next time. Just take care. Bye bye everyone.